This is David Fanola, Senior Director of Engineering at the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute, and I would like to present a brief overview of our new publication titled, Design Guide for Reinforced Concrete Columns. This publication is based on the provisions of the 2014 edition of ACI 318, Building Code Requirements for Structural Concrete. As you may know, this document was completely reorganized in this edition. The purpose of this design guide is to assist design professionals in efficiently designing and detailing reinforced concrete columns in building structures. The main sections of the design guide are shown here, and we will provide a summary of some of the content in each section, highlighting the information that makes this publication very useful in everyday practice. Provided in Chapter 3 are the general requirements for strength design. Included is nominal design strength information for rectangular and circular sections subjected to axial forces or combined moments in axial forces. Flow charts, like the one shown here for circular sections, are provided that contain step-by-step -step procedures on how to construct design strength interaction diagrams. The effects of slenderness are also covered, and design aids and flow charts are given that can be used to determine magnified bending moments for both non-sway and sway frames. Guidelines and recommendations on how to select a column size for strength and overall economy are presented in Chapter 4. Guidelines and design aids are given based on the size of the building, the type of loading a column is subjected to, and the seismic design category that the building is assigned to. Appendix B contains 22 charts that can be used to determine preliminary column sizes for columns subjected to axial forces. The columns range in size from 12 to 48 inches with concrete compressive strengths from 4 to 14 KSI, grade 60 and grade 80 reinforcement, and reinforcement ratios between 1 and 2%. The gross areas of the column are provided so that the charts can also be used for rectangular and circular columns. A simplified method to determine preliminary column sizes in special moment frames, which are required in seismic design category D, is also given. A wealth of useful and practical information is given in Chapter 5 related to determining and detailing the required longitudinal and transverse reinforcement in a column. In addition to providing the equations that are needed to determine the required reinforcement, numerous design aids, like the one shown here on the number of longitudinal bars that can fit within rectangular and circular sections, are given throughout the chapter. Many details are also given, which contain all the pertinent ACI 318 requirements, like the one shown here for seismic design category A and B, and for seismic design categories C and D. Step-by-step -step design procedures are given in flow charts. Illustrated here is the one for reinforced concrete columns in special moment frames with rectilinear hoop reinforcement. Chapter six contains examples that illustrate the proper application of the code provisions and the use of the design aids in the previous chapters. 
14 examples are provided that, can, that cover construction of interaction diagrams, design for slenderness effects, preliminary column sizing, and comprehensive design and detailing for columns and buildings assigned to seismic design category A through D. Finally, the three appendices contain information that can be used in everyday practice. Reinforcing bar data is given in Appendix A, and, App and Appendix B, as mentioned previously, contains numerous charts to determine preliminary column sizes. 900 actual interaction diagrams are given in Appendix C, which cover a wide range of column sizes and material properties, as noted here. They can be used to quickly determine cross-sectional dimensions and required longitudinal reinforcement for columns subjected to both moments and axial forces. In summary, design professionals will find this design guide useful for the comprehensive and practical information that is provided, including the numerous design aids and flowcharts that will make the overall design process faster and more efficient. Students and individuals studying for licensing exams will find the completely worked out examples very valuable. For additional information on this design guide and many of the other resources available from CRSI, please visit ReBARU, which can be accessed using the web address shown here. Thank you for your interest in CRSI resources.